Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there. Welcome to Scuba Dive Magazine and welcome to Ask Mark, our scuba diving Q&A, where I'm Mark, a former dive instructor, do my very best to answer your scuba diving questions. So if you do have any scuba diving questions, by all means, pop it down in the comment section underneath this video and use this hashtag in your comment to get it featured. Uh, in the meantime, I do do my best to, uh, to type out an answer as you get an answer sooner rather than later. And the community does an awesome job at answering questions. So well done, everybody. Uh, but yeah, if you do have any questions that you want me to answer, uh, pop them down in the comment section. Today, I'm answering a question from Brent about using John lines. So Brent says, I'm looking to buy a John line and I've noticed two camps regarding what goes on the end. Camp one has a simple carabiner and loops the line around the rope and clips the carabiner back onto the John line. Camp two uses a Garvin hook on the line instead. Camp 1.5 loops a Garvin hook over the rope and then clips it onto the John line, uh, but that seems a bit insane. Uh, what are the pros and cons of the two clip methods? So yeah, there are a few ways of attaching a John line onto something. Uh, for anyone who's unsure what a John line, uh, this, well, this is quite a short John line and it's basically a way of if you have, there's a reason this uh, this rope is here beside me. Uh, if you have a, a rope like a, an anchor line or something uh, or a shot line uh, that you want to do a safety stop or some kind of stop at, but there's either a lot of you around it, in which case you can't all be at the same depth because it's just going to get too crowded, uh, or you don't physically want to hold on to it, either because there's such strong current that you're just going to be flying like a flag, or if there's a lot of water movement on the surface and that's moving up and down, that will shred your gloves. And uh, if you're not wearing gloves, it's just going to hurt your hands. If there's a lot of marine fouling on there, uh, so barnacles and that kind of stuff can really quickly just shred your, um, uh, your hands and your gloves. So it can be handy. The, the blue one's a uh, slightly longer one, is basically a way that you can attach it onto the line, clip that onto your harness, and then just drift, basically, without having to hold on to the line, uh, with, even if it is just shooting up and down, uh, it doesn't really matter because when you're on the end of that, it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of movement and it, it just distances so that more people can be at the same depth on the line. Physically attaching onto the line, there's a few different ways. Um, Brent has mentioned a Garvin hook. Uh, I don't actually have a Garvin hook, but it looks like this. Uh, very clever device, simple device. And there is that V-shaped wedge that just hooks over it. And because it's like graduated, uh, if you've got different size and different diameter um, uh, lines, it can hook onto most. Um, the, the closest I have is just a simple reef hook, but yeah, you'd attach it onto that. And then if you have a, um, uh, a John line, the John line is more the, the, the strap itself. It doesn't have to be two inch webbing, uh, no, one inch webbing in this. Uh, in this case, it could be uh, sort of a range of, of things you can make your own. Um, and then you'd have to clip that onto yourself. Personally, uh, I tend to, go more the like prussic knot kind of method and just loop it around and pull it tight. And then that gives you the attachment point. It can move up and down. So if you don't want to have to remove it because you've got to unclip yourself and if you're in high current, then you've got to do all of this whilst like swimming or holding onto it and then move up to another depth and then reattach it. Um, a prussic knot is uh, something else that you can do. If you get a loop of line, uh, something quite strong, you can wrap it around and around and around if you want to be really secure uh, and then pass that loop through. And then you get a similar, similar kind of deal where you can clip onto that. And then even if you start to float up to the surface or sink back down, it kind of grips in place. So that's a prussic knot, uh, quite a useful knot to, um, uh, to know. But uh, whatever works for you, the same with most scuba diving concepts, it's, um, 
if it works for you, great, go for that. Um, if there are alternative methods, maybe try it out, see if it works. Um, but yeah, personally, I, I do more of this kind of um, uh, job. The downsides of this is that you've got the fabric material directly attaching onto the marine line, whatever it is. So there's more likely to be wear on that line. So the entire thing does wear out a bit more frequently. Whereas if you have a Garvin hook, you've got a piece of metal that's attaching onto that and it is gonna take a lot longer to wear through the metal. One downside of that is that a lot of divers don't like metal on metal. So that kind of clip, um, uh, it, it kind of puts a lot of divers off. Um, so yeah, if, you, if I were building a, um, a John line from scratch with a Garvin hook, I know this isn't a Garvin hook, but it's the closest I've got, uh, I probably would just attach the material, the line directly onto that in some way, and then have a clip on the other end. So you can clip that onto yourself, hook that on, and you're secure. And then you can just quickly remove that and reposition it. Um, that's really the main benefit of the Garvin hook is that it's it's quick to relocate, but it's also a bit more um, uh, robust. So it can deal with like marine fouling and stuff. It's not gonna matter if there are mussels and stuff and, uh, and razors and stuff on there. Uh, it, it's really, it's, it's much stronger than just the fabric. Um, but it's probably about that size, maybe a, um, a yeah, probably is about that size. Um, you you do have to find somewhere to fit that in a pocket, um, and it's a pretty one-trick pony as such. Uh, it'll do that really nicely, but you can use this kind of John line for a whole range of things. Um, if you're lifting something and you need an, an extra strap just to uh, just to stabilize it, uh, you can use that in some kind of way. Um, if, you, um, uh, if you're towing another diver and you wanna get a little bit further from them, you can attach that to their tank valve and then be a little bit further back from them to just free up because otherwise you're just kind of kicking them. Um, th there's lots of like multi-purpose uses for a line such as this, uh, whereas if it has a, um, a Garvin hook on the end, arguably you could like hook that onto a piece of their equipment, but hey, it's, um, they're, they're both right answers. Um, as, as I said, with, with most things in scuba diving, there's no real right or wrong. It's just different ways of doing the same thing. Yeah, Garvin hooks uh, and John lines are named after their inventors and, um, and that they are a useful thing to, um, to just have in your um, uh, in your thigh pocket or something just so that yeah if you do come across some current some people are not fans of them uh, don't like them whatsoever um, others swear by them it, it's like all of uh, scuba diving you'll you'll find certain camps uh, as you said in your um, uh, in your question yeah some divers do it this way some divers do it that way uh, personally I think I'm in like what was it the not even like camp one and a half because I don't use a, a, a Garmin a, a Garvin hook. Um, so I'm, I suppose, in camp number three um, using more of a, a prosic method. But um, yeah, whatever works for you. Um, try them both. Garvin hook's are always going to be useful for something. Um, but yeah, I, I just use a, a, more, a more basic John strap, I guess. Um, but that's probably because that's how I was taught to do it. Um, as with so many things in scuba diving, it depends how you instructor did it and it just washes um, downhill. So um, yeah, maybe if I learn under a different instructor, I'd do it slightly differently. Um, but hey, let us know down in the comments below what you do. Um, do you use a Garvin hook? Uh, do you use more of a, a prosic knot kind of method? Um, do you just hold on to it and, and just deal with the um, uh, the water movement? I mean, I've done it before on um, on Thistlegorm where I kind of hook my uh, my knee over the line because there was so much current. It means you're still hands free and you're just kind of sat on it, uh, but you, you don't have to, uh, to grip onto it with your hands. Uh, there, there's lots of ways of doing it, but yeah, if there's really, really strong current, it is nice to have a, a John line just to uh, attach it. 
kind of let go. Uh, if you're using a long one like the, the blue one, you do have to pull yourself back in. Uh, but hey, it's, uh, it just means that you don't have to hold onto that line. And it is better if there's a lot of water movement on the surface. Uh, you're not going to get yanked up and down whilst you're trying to stop um, trying to maintain depth. Uh, but yeah, let us know what method you use down in the comments below. And uh, any other questions, let us know as well. Use this AskMark hashtag to get it featured. And remember to head over to our website, scubadivermag.com. We've got both physical and digital editions of our magazines all around the world. Uh, so if you don't want a print magazine, uh, you can just get a digital subscription and you can browse it to your heart's content on a smart device. Uh, but if you want a free subscription, you can of course subscribe here on YouTube. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.